Oh, this is uh, family. This is my wife, Emma. This is my son, Charlie. Shoot. We just met, but you're, you know, you're firing already. I appreciate it. I mean, all I'm saying is, you know, most crime happens on weekends, holidays. So you would think anybody married to a cop would understand this. But no. One day, your wife will be angry because you couldn't go to her sister's birthday dinner. You can give a woman 600 Tuesdays. It ain't worth three Saturday nights. <laughs> first thing I heard was that Chris was going to be involved, which immediately, you know, it's like one of those moments where you go like, that's a really good idea. Wish I'd had that idea. This is great. It's a great marriage between a piece of talent and a franchise. Immediately felt like an event. I was so intrigued by what that was going to be, just as a movie fan. And then when I got to read the script, um, I was so sort of pleasantly uh, surprised to discover this sort of buddy cop kind of element to the movie. It really felt reminiscent to 48 Hours or uh, Beverly Hills Cop or, you know, these movies that I truly um, grew up just obsessed with. So to get to be a part of this was quite, um, it was a f fulfillment of a very specific dream for me, I would say. Well, it's something old and it's something new, I would say. You know, it, it, the movie has the legacy of, of the Saw movies very much in its DNA. And we have, you know, Darren Bowsman returning to the franchise and Mark and Oren who produced all the movies. So there's, you have um, all of like the cadence of a Saw movie that you would want. And at the same time, you've got Chris coming in and Sam coming in and myself coming in. These new people have never been involved in, in, in these movies before. And so there's a really kind of exciting, I think, collaboration um, between sort of the fresh eyes and the old guard. And I think it's resulted in a really kind of exciting new chapter in, in, in the franchise. They're sort of polar opposites, you know. Um, the two characters, Zeke is uh, very experienced, he's very cool, he's very savvy and street smart. Um, and, you know, William, the character I play, is, is much more naive, um, more wide-eyed and uh, innocent, I think. And what's interesting about them is that they actually start to work together very well very quickly. You know, there's a real arc to to their dynamic over the course of the movie. But, you know, I think traditionally in a buddy cop movie, they kind of at each other the whole time. What's kind of interesting is that fairly quickly and organically, you know, Zeke and William, maybe because they're so different and they're such different places in their lives, that they find a way to work together pretty functionally um, from the outset. The traps are sort of the thing that makes Saw Saw. And, um, it's a big thing like on set when you do trap day, like everyone comes in their best clothes. Um, everyone takes it super seriously, very proud of it. These are very complex things to come up with. Um, they're not easy designs. They're not, they're not easy conceptually. Um, and they're very elaborate when you see them in, in real life. Um, so it's really kind of exciting, you know, as a longstanding fan of this franchise to come and be there and actually kind of be privy to how all this stuff works was really fun. And, and again, I think that the, the moral questions that this franchise poses is really the key to its longevity, and that's tied to the traps, right? Um, there's always these sort of complicated moral arguments being made in these movies, and it, it, it gives them something interesting and a little bit more layered. Darren Lynn Bowsman, who directed the movie, is, is obviously the filmmaker behind two, three, and four. So he, he's, he's worked a lot in the Saw space and really kind of understands the language of the movie and the visual language of these movies. Uh, along with, you know, Josh Stolberg and Pete Goldfinger who wrote the last Saw film and then Mark and Oren, the producers who've been with these movies since the beginning. So there's, there's a great relationship to the past, I think, with Spiral. And then you also have, you know, Marisol and Chris and Sam, myself, all coming in, we're all fresh to it. Um, and, and so there's like, a, like, I think, a really exciting combination of all the things you want out of a Saw movie 
and all of those beats you want to hear and all the things you want to feel. And then this, this real genuine new energy that also feels very contemporary and different. Um, and the movie kind of achieves that, I think, in a successful way. And Darren's a huge part of that. Here's the great thing about Spiral. If you've never seen a Saw movie before, you can come into the movie and there is nothing you need to know. You know, my mom has never seen a Saw movie before. My mother's never seen a Saw movie before. Hi, mom. She can watch Spiral through her fingers and she'll be okay. She'll understand what's going on. Um, at the same time, if you love these movies or if you've seen a couple of the other ones, there will probably be something in this that, you, you know, will be an Easter egg or a nod to your previous knowledge. So I think it satisfies the long-standing fans of the franchise, but then also embraces anybody who wants to start here. I think I knew that Sam was going to be in the movie when, I, when we first started talking about it. And I, he's the greatest of all time. I feel like I'm embarrassed saying anything about Samuel L. Jackson. You know, what can I say that's useful? He's a genius. He's truly one of the greatest living American actors. Um, he's an icon. <laughs> I felt extremely humbled to be in his presence and get to work with him in any capacity. Um, and I think we're all just lucky to have him in the movie.